Hello friends, it's Jim O'Rear. Here we are in Philadelphia outside of Edgar Allan Poe's house. This is the house where he wrote some of his most famous works, including Fall of the House of Usher, which I'm especially close to because I played Roderick Usher in a production with Kevin Sorbo. And uh, it was written inside here. So we're going to go inside Edgar Allan Poe's house, take a look around and show you what it looks like. This is Edgar Allan Poe's house in Philadelphia. And he wrote some of his most famous works while in Philadelphia, like um, Mask of the Red Death and The Black Cat and The Raven and Fall of the House of Usher. And while I say he wrote Fall of the House of Usher in this house, he really didn't. He, he actually did that just before he moved into this house. But I like to say that he did because, you know, he wrote it while he was in Philadelphia just before this. But uh, when you go to the house, you actually enter through his neighbor's house, which is connected to his. And uh, if you look at this model, you can see the white structure is his neighbor's house. And then that brick structure is, uh, is Poe's house that he lived in. So, uh, and we're going to look at something really interesting in the cellar there in just a moment, which is my favorite part. But you'll see here, it is a registered National Historic Landmark. It's even got a little plaque there that, uh, you know, for the raven that he wrote here. And uh, he definitely wrote the black cat here. And that's why we're going to go into the cellar in just a moment. And I'll show you something there that inspired it. But, uh, you know, when you go into his house, it's multi-storied, and you go here, and this is a reading room. It's the only room in the house that is furnished, and, uh, you know, he, uh, he wrote a lot of really grisly things, but he wrote explicit instructions on how to tastefully decorate a room. And this reading room is, uh, is where he would have a lot of his friends over and things like that, um, the bankruptcy records indicate that the house had little furniture and uh, so he always made sure that the reading room was decorated to host investors and other authors and things like that and, and it was perfect. Now this is actually what his, uh, his parlor looks like now. Um, that was just a replica of the, the, the parlor and reading room. But this is the, uh, this is the parlor. Where, uh, where he would actually have his, his, uh, his guests over, and it was the only house decorated very nicely. Just outside of this, if you look out into the garden and across the street, you're going to see that building was probably not there when Poe lived here, but now it's a giant building with a painting of Poe on it, which is very cool. And uh, if you go over there and get a closer look, it's uh, it's beautiful painting on the side of this building. It's very, very cool. And it's definitely uh, something that you'll want to go over and get a, a quick photo at like this. But I digress. Let's go back into the house. Um, here we go. So if we go back into the house, um, next to that parlor or reading room is the kitchen. And like most middle-class households in Philadelphia in the 1800s, Poe's house didn't have electricity or running water. Uh, meals would be cooked on a wood-burning stove. And uh, that's kind of what the, the kitchen looked like right there. Now, if you go up this narrow staircase, you can see it's very, very narrow, you're going to go up to the second floor. And second floor has got a couple of, uh, couple of interesting rooms in it. Uh, when you first swing around here, you go into this narrow little hallway right there. And this room is, uh, this is, this is what they just call the small room. And when Poe lived there, it was just an open space. It was used as a sitting area. Um, it, it had windows that faced the sun. So a lot of light could come in. He could do some writing and it was just sort of a general, general sitting area. And then if we, uh, if we go right back out here and cross over into the second room, you'll notice there's the skinny little hallway that we just came down. Well, there's another flight of steps right here that goes up to the third level. We'll go up there in just a moment. But this was actually uh, across the room. This was the, the bedroom. And he used to write in here as well because he was under such pressure to get... Uh, you know, ideas out onto the paper, and he kept really irregular hours, and uh, he would sit here in his bedroom also, and uh, and write. And you'll notice that it faces also out into the sun in case he's writing in the day. Now, if we go up here to the third floor, a couple more rooms up here. As we swing right over here, this was uh, his wife's mother's room, and. 
she devoted most of her time to caring for the couple and running errands for Edgar and searching for ways to make their money last and uh, taking care of his wife, Virginia, because she was very sick and couldn't get out much. So uh, she did a lot of that. And if we, uh, if we look a little further, you can see the garden out there, very nice little garden. And this is an odd little cubby right here. I'm not sure what they would have used that for, but it's an interesting little little kind of cubby right there. And the ceilings are slanted because it's right underneath the roof. Now we're going to cross over the stairs again, over into the other room. And this was Poe's wife's Virginia's room. And uh, she was 21 years old at the time. She was ill with tuberculosis. Um, but, uh, you know, during her time in the house, if she felt well enough, she would get out and, you know, help her mother around the house and, and things like that. She also hosted uh, Edgar's guests when he would have guests over. So it was just the three of them that lived here, Edgar Allan Poe and his wife, Virginia, and Virginia's uh, mother. Now, uh, that's, that's uh, most of the rooms in the house. If we go back down now, uh, don't forget we're going to go in the cellar in just a moment. And you go outside into that garden area. This is what the garden area looks like. And they still grow things, uh, herbs and stuff to use in the kitchen there today. Um, other plants that they grow there reference plants that Poe may have written about in some of his works and some of the poisons and stuff like that. Of course, they've got a raven out there because the, the famous the raven was written right here in this house. And uh, it's a nice little, nice little little courtyard and yard and, and garden. Now we're going to pop back into the house. And if you notice here, there are some steps that go down. These are not the original steps, as you can tell, but this goes to the cellar. These steps are the safe ones to go down because when you actually get down into the cellar, you can see the original steps. You don't want to use those. <laughs> but these drop down into the cellar and look at that hole in the wall over there. We're going to take a closer look in a moment. You may see a black cat over there in that hole. This is a creepy cellar. It freaked out my wife uh, a little bit. She's like, yeah, I don't like it down here. But uh, this area here is another little set of steps that goes up into uh, the garden. You can take those right out and that's all locked up, but you can see that there's an exit way there to the garden. Now we're going to pop over to this other side and that hole in the wall that you just saw, this is what inspired uh, the part of, of the black cat. You notice that it is a, it's a false chimney. It's, it's just a hole in the wall that kind of juts out and they put a black cat in there because this is what they believe inspired him to write that passage in the black cat where he seals up the body or the person inside the wall alive and uh and i can totally see it i can totally see that happening so great place for a photo as well because that's a major point of inspiration now if we go back over into his neighbor's house that's where they have the museum set up and you can go in there and see and read all kinds of things about Poe and his works and his publishing, as well as his family and about the time that he spent in Philadelphia. And uh, this whole other part of the house is just devoted to that and the gift shop where you can get books and dolls and hats and shirts and keychains and coffee cups and all kinds of fun, fun Poe related stuff. So if you are a Poe fan, and you were in Philadelphia, definitely do not miss popping into the, the house. It is, is a fantastic landmark. There you go. That was a look inside Edgar Allan Poe's house in Philadelphia. It's a national historic site. It is actually free to come here. So if you're in Philadelphia and you're into Edgar Allan Poe, you should see the house. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. It's a historic site. You need to see it. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, click that like button to let the powers that be know that you like the video. And while you're at it, click on follow or subscribe and you'll be notified when I upload new videos. But thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.